Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Like MRI, and this is a 17-year-old male who injured his elbow playing football. Apparently, someone landed on him, and he hyperextended the elbow. He really didn't have any tenderness over the medial or lateral epicondyles, and just pain in the forearm, a little bit of uh, swelling, he said. And on this view, he's got some significant injuries, so I'm going to start on this medial side. Here's the lateral side, and just to get oriented, this is the humerus up top, comes down and ends. There's the lateral side here. It's called the capitellum, and this is the radial head. Looks like a little golf tee. So this is the radial capitellar joint, the lateral side. We can see this little bright spot here. This is marrow edema, so an injury over here. And if we look on the other side, the medial side, this is the ulna, comes up here. The top of the ulna attaches to the triceps. You can see that triceps coming down there attaching. There's marrow edema in the ulna from an injury. And over here, there's a little pointy part. This is called the sublime tubercle of the ulna. And this is where the ulnar collateral ligament, the ligaments that hold the lateral side on, uh, attach. And we can see that he has a tear of the UCL, their ulnar collateral ligament. And there's uh, a medial one over here. And there's also a lateral ulnar collateral ligament that wraps around the back here. So this is the medial ulnar collateral ligament. There's a couple components. One is an anterior component, which is right. Probably here, there's a little vertical line, dark line. And that should come down and attach to this pointy part right there. You can imagine, well, maybe a piece of it attaches there, but right here I don't see the attachment. And right here there's fluid extending out. So instead of seeing the ulnar collateral ligament, we see fluid going through a tear of the joint capsule and the ulnar collateral ligament. So this is a tear of the anterior band of the ulnar collateral ligament. And there's a posterior band, too. If I go another cut back, here's that fluid that's extravasating out of the joint. Now this is the posterior band. It uh, comes back up here and it attaches along this broad, flat part of the uh, medial epicondyle. And you can see instead of being straight and taut, it's lax. It comes out sideways and comes up here and just seems to end here. So it looks like it's torn, or at least partially torn and pulled off of the uh, attachment here to the humerus. And again, there's fluid here. Now we can see that there's brightness in this. This is the muscle overlying it. This is the medial epicondyle. So this is the common flexor tendon and the common flexor muscle group. The deep fibers of that muscle group are partially torn associated with that injury. The UCL and joint capsule it just stretch those muscle fibers there. So a very significant injury that's going to require surgery unfortunately. Now the lateral ulnar collateral ligament is a little bit harder to see but it comes off back here, goes around the radial head, comes up here, attaches over here, and we see that there's marrow edema and brightness here, so it looks like that lateral ulnar collateral ligament, we just never see it attached to the humerus. And with that marrow edema, I believe that that is torn, and uh, maybe periosteal injury as well. And the joint capsule back there is probably torn from the uh, attachment. And then the radial collateral ligament, we see a linear band here, it comes off the radius, goes up. That looks like the radial collateral ligament is intact. Usually these blend together, it's hard to separate, but it looks like I can imagine a uh, lateral ulnar collateral ligament tear from the humerus, but the radial collateral ligament, on this view at least, looks like it's intact. There's no widening over here, so that would go along with this being intact. And then over here is the common extensor tendon. We did an arthrogram, that's why it's bright over here. We injected um, contrast and some lidocaine over here, so that's why this brightness is here. So those are the main findings, but there's one other significant finding if we look on the sagittal view. This is looking in profile. We see the humerus coming down here. It ends. This is that radial head, the radial capitellar joint. There's fluid from the arthrogram in the joint. Looks like it's a little bit offset here, but this is very common when they get positioned. There's a little bit of laxity, and this can float, but it's a little bit wide as well. So there, um, with that ligament tear, the joint is a little bit wide, uh, and, but sometimes you can see a little slippage just normally when they don't have a tear. But Back over here in the back, we have thickening of the joint capsule and the lateral ulnar collateral ligament where they attach. There's marrow edema here, so it looks like there's a periosteal avulsion injury in the back. But the main finding is in the front. So if we look over here, there's something we don't see very often at all, but this is a measurement of the uh, muscle. This is the brachialis muscle that comes down, it attaches down here as a broad attachment, and Right up here we see that there is fluid from the joint. It goes through this, which is the joint capsule is ruptured. 
and the fluid tracks right out into a tear of the muscle. So this is a tear of the uh, brachialis muscle. See all that brightness? This is uh, abnormal. The fluid is percolating in between the muscle fibers here. And again, the muscle should be nice and dark and uniform, but instead it's only dark along the front. It's too bright right in here. And then again, here you can see that fluid going right into that torn, deep fibers of that muscle. So brachialis, partial muscle tear with a ruptured anterior joint capsule. So a really significant injury here. And that's it. Thank you very much.